Another team in the Big Ten that you wanted to talk about, and I'm honored that you asked a lot of questions and want to talk about a lot of things about the Big Ten, um, USC. You said that you don't think it's appropriate, something along these lines, I'm paraphrasing, to sleep on USC. What do you mean yeah, by that? Yeah, bro, I got to I got to come on here. This is a Big 10 channel and defend USC's honor. They're a Pac-12 team and a lot of Big 10 people, not saying you are one of them, but feel like since they're a West Coast team, they're from Cali, they're soft, they're a finesse team and they don't have what it takes to be a great team in the Big 10. I got to strongly disagree with that. Look, in terms of how they're going to match up up front, okay, like there definitely is going to be a big adjustment period for Lincoln Riley, but people seem to forget Lincoln Riley's track record. This dude has put numerous offensive linemen, such as Creed Humphrey, Cody Ford, into the National Football League, and this dude knows offense. No team in the Big Ten has a, rec- has a receiver as dynamic as Zachariah Branch outside of that receiver that everybody's talking about for Ohio State, but I haven't seen him play yet. But Zachariah Branch, you talk about an underrated non-quarterback who could win the Heisman next year. He has a lot of similarities to the Anthony Thomas and Tavon Austin. All right. You have a really good quarterback and Miller Moss, who was going off against Louisville in the Holiday Bowl. Lincoln Riley knows offense. Okay, let, let's not overthink this. Just because he's going to a different conference doesn't mean that he's just going to lose all the offense. All right? Is his offense going to be putting up 40 against Michigan and Big and Michigan and Penn State's defenses? Probably not, but I don't think they're just going to be, you know, dismantled and just torn to shreds by these defenses. The defense... With De'Anne Lynn taking over as the defensive coordinator, this is going to be a really good defense. Are they going to be a top 25 defense? No, but they definitely have the capability to be a top 50 defense. The talent is there for USC defensively. Okay, they just re-recruited Bear Alexander to the team from hitting the portal. Crazy, you got to do that now. The talent's there in the secondary. All they need is the coaching. I'm not worried about if this is going to take a few years to work out because we saw with um, Jim Knowles at Ohio State, his defense wasn't good right away. It took his second season for the defense to hit its, you know, hit its gear under him. But with De'Anne Lynn and only one season at UCLA, he took a bottom top 88 defense and turned it into a top 15 defense in the span of one year. There's no reason why he shouldn't be able to do the same thing at USC. That's why they stole this dude from across the street. And the last thing I got to say before I let you go is that, you know, people keep saying that it don't matter who Lincoln Riley hires as his defensive coordinator. It's a mentality thing. You're a Michigan fan, Sam. You remember how many times Jim Harbaugh trained, changed the offense? He went from pro style then when they got Shea Patterson, went to a spread, and then said, you know what, F the spread. I'm going back to what I know works, old smash mouth football. There was a point where maybe you had concerns if Jim Harbaugh was ever going to get it right on offense. And when he figured out the offense, you didn't know if he was going to be able to get it right on defense because that old defensive coordinator y'all had that y'all never wanted to part ways with was holding y'all back. So great coaches, sometimes it takes them longer to make changes. But Lincoln Riley, we can all agree, is a top 10 coach in the sport. That's the worst season he ever had. All this dude does is win. So I just had to come on here and defend USC. The talent definitely is there for them to win. The offense is going to be good this year. It just comes down to the defense, and I believe in De'Ant and Lynn. I think that a lot of Big Ten fans are really sleeping on USC. They don't have the toughness up front that you have, but you guys don't have the dynamic playmakers that they have on the outside. No, we don't. <laughs> we, we, we do not. We have never... Like, since Braylon Edwards, which was, like, when I was three years old, we have not had that. We just just haven't. It's really impressive, and I love what Riley does on offense, for the most part. Um, 
I think long term USC is a national title contender, but that's long term. That's not this season, which we're we're talking about. And I think they could actually be this season. But just because I think a team is a high ceiling doesn't mean that I don't think they have a very low floor. And their schedule, their schedule's tough. I mean, they play LSU and Notre Dame in non-conference, and then their October Big Ten slate is a murderer's row of teams that can run the football, have good trench play, and it's a mix of home and away games that I'm just very concerned about. Would you like to take a guess at my current win total for USC in the regular season? We'll do like bowl game as like a little cherry on top. I say you got to match seven wins. Bingo. I hope not. Bingo. Oh, That's exactly. Oh, <laughs> damn, no. That's exactly, no, damn. That's exactly what I have them at. And what's hilarious is I have them beating Notre Dame and LSU. I have them losing to a few Big Ten teams they have no business losing to because I think that those teams can run the football and control the clock. And I don't have... Look, I could be wrong. Again, I think that they could be a national championship contender this year, but they could also be a team that completely falls apart. Like, because... Just hear me out. I'm not saying I'm right because... My goodness, we all know that when I have predicted certain teams to have losing records or winning records, sometimes I'm right and sometimes it's a disaster. Just like, you know, that's how the preseason is. They play at Michigan, then they host Wisconsin, play at Minnesota, and host Penn State. That's their late September, early October slate. All of those teams will have probably... Top 25 at worst rushing offenses. And I, I'm i sorry to say if you're a USC fan, Bear Alexander's a pass rush defensive tackle. He's not a run stopper. And I like DeAnton Lynn, and I think that it'll work out long term. But I think that in year one, and I, again, could be wrong, I think in year one, there are going to be growing pains. And I think the reason they beat LSU is because LSU is losing a ton as well, like USC. And I think USC is more in the identity of being an offensive-minded team than a Brian Kelly team is. So I think that's kind of like an upset. And Notre Dame is, well, home game, rivalry game, revenge spot. I think it's going to be a needed win given the fact that I don't think the season will be that good. And I have questions about Notre Dame with Estime leaving. Like, I don't know if they'll be as good at running the football. I mean, they have Riley Leonard, but I'm talking about in explosive plays and, you know, running it 40 times and just killing you. Minnesota can do that. I mean, P.J. Fleck will turtle and beat you 20-17. to Luke Fickle at Wisconsin, they'll have a great O-line. James Franklin will run it on, like, he'll run on fourth and three, which against most teams is idiocy, but against a team like USC with a D-line that we don't know a ton about, that could work. And then Michigan is Donovan Edwards, who, if USC doesn't have a right angle on tackling, gone. But that is just my opinion I agree that USC shouldn't be underestimated because of their high ceiling. Like, from a power ranking standpoint, I agree with you. From my predictions, though, I I just have a hard time seeing them joining a tougher conference, losing all that they lose, and getting better record-wise. I think they'll get better in an eye test way, but that schedule's tough. I mean, don't you think, or do you think that they'll just overcome it? Here's my – I get your point with the run defense, but the thing is, like, these teams aren't just going to be able to run the ball on USC every play. They got to put it on the air, and I like Miller Moss over Tyler Van Dyke, Alex Orgy, whoever they have at Minnesota. I know they don't got the dude with the crazy last name anymore. They got a really, they got a really good, they got a really good FCS guy, if I'm not mistaken, out of the portal. Yes. A little game, James Franklin. Lincoln Riley has been in plenty of big games. 
I, I like Lincoln Riley in that spot, playing at home in a coliseum. That's a game that could go either way. Maryland doesn't know how to win big games. Nope. <laughs> Rutgers, Rutgers, I definitely could see that game being the game that favors Rutgers. Rutgers definitely could win that game. Like, Rutgers is a sleeper team in the Big Ten this year. Like, they are. If they can get some decent QB play, like, they can throw the football, like, actually throw the football. They could be dangerous. They definitely can beat Washington with Jet Fish. That's going to be a rebuilding year. Nebraska, UCLA, Notre Dame, they should write, they, they should wipe the floor with that last three on week slate. I agree. Slate. I, I, I don't see USC having no less than eight wins because a lot of these teams have questions on offense. You can argue, you can say they'll have success running the football on them, but USC, the talent is there defensively. You feel me? Like, USC does recruit pretty well. Now, are they going to be able to, you know, stop the bleeding when they go up against a team like Michigan that really has their identity built on toughness and physicality? Absolutely. But outside of the run defense, you know, like, I like a lot about USC. I like the coaching. I do feel like they got a coaching advantage in a lot of these games. Sharon Moore, I do like the brother. And the brother did show that he can't win big games last year. But it's a completely different team now. It you know, is. you're rebuilding the team from scratch. You got a lot of new faces at a lot of different positions. And Michigan is one of those teams that they don't just relock and reload. It probably is going to take y'all at least two years the fastest to get back to, you know, Big Ten contention. Wisconsin is like, we still don't know about Luke Fickle. And I, I don't even know about their offensive coordinator for well. Um, Phil Longo. Phil Longo. I don't know yeah, about like, him either. His, his offense didn't look, didn't really look that good. Like they had um that the Bruchel guy, right? Shane Bruchel. Oh no, Tanner Mordecai. Tanner yeah, Mordecai. His, and he was supposed successor. to be great. Yeah, he was supposed to be great, and he he was a massive disappointment. And they had the running back, you know, but I don't really know how committed they are to running the football. It's just a lot of these teams. You can say that they have the run game, they have the physicality, but they got just as many questions as USC outside of Penn State. You know, Penn State, it really just is, can James Franklin win a big game on the road in this environment? With USC, something that they have that the Big Ten is going to have to adjust to is the kind of speed that they're going to have when it comes to their perimeter. You know, the only team in this conference that has ever had the kind of arsenal USC has had from a skill standpoint has been Ohio State. Yes. Ohio State, what they've lacked has been, you know, the physicality up front. So I do agree. I, I just think that this is the year, though, for Lincoln Riley. He's going to have that defense figured out with the Ant Land. They're paying that dude a little bit too much money <laughs> for it just to be like a a one, two, a two-year process. Like, they need this dude to produce instantly. And I, th I think he is because the talent's there. Yeah. I, I think at linebacker and at parts of the secondary, and maybe defensive end, there there is talent. There, there's talent to work with, yes. Um, and again, I think they can win it all. Um, Riley, it, it's so interesting for me, because I think he's a really good OC, it, actually probably one of the best play callers, good QB coach. Last year showed he's even better than Day at coaching QBs. I don't know what Kyle McCord was. I think if he stayed around, he could have been a really good QB, but that was not good, and Riley's never had a QB that bad under his under his belt. Um, But the last team that tried to get all, outside of Ohio State, and I loved what Ohio State did with Stroud, in fact, I think they've hurt themselves by moving away from that. Um, I think they should have stayed with that and just said, we should get better on defense, but we can't We can't change anything about the offense. Because, um, I don't know, I, I think their offenses have regressed ever since 21. And at times that's, along with the defense, but in partic particular last year you saw, th that hurt them. It put them in a position where Penn State could be stupid and in that game or we're Indiana it's like Indiana's not this good like what's going on Nebraska is the only other team I can think of who like tried to get like cute and fast more so fast because cute's almost like an insult they tried to get fast 
they, they tried to institute what Frost did at Oregon and UCF, and it, it just blew up in his face. Now, I think Riley's much better than Frost. However, the Big Ten is just... They'll have to adjust to it, but I've seen in these the, these title games, like Georgia-Alabama two years ago, or Georgia-TCU, or Michigan-Washington, physicality beats speed. And USC needs to get physical. I mean, if they don't get... And, and I, I think that's probably the point where we disagree is not on their potential. It's on the fact that... That, yeah, that you think the defense will be physical and, and the O-line. And I I don't think it will. And I think that that will bite them against a team like Minnesota, who isn't as talented, but is more physical. But but here's the thing, though. Okay. Even though these teams, you know, like, I'm not going to say Minnesota could have a better, could be better than USC up front this year. But I, I still believe that USC is more talented I up front than do. the majority of these teams because of the recruiting, where they're located, how they've been utilizing the transfer portal. But it's just more to just, you know, physicality that it takes to win the game. You still do have to have the weapons on the outside. Like, if Drew Aller had Lincoln Riley as his play caller and the receivers that Caleb Williams had, Penn State easily probably would have ran the table because he's a really good quarterback. But There's a lot for the questions that we have about USC and for what can go wrong with them. We can make the same points for Penn State and a couple of other teams just with different positions. With Penn State, we don't know if their new offensive coordinator is actually going to work out. And we don't really know how good they are when it comes to their wide receiver position. And they lose Manny Diaz. And they're replacing him with Tom Allen, the former coach of Indiana. And then when you look at Rutgers, like, Rutgers could only run the football. That's the problem. Like, they can only run the football. Like, you got to be able to show that you can throw against USC. Like, USC's offense, I don't think it's going to get shut down in the Big Ten. And there are a lot of teams in the Big Ten that, bro, this conference allowed a team whose defense scored more than their offense to make it to the Big Ten championship. Yes. That should never be allowed to happen. So that shows you how abysmal – the quarterback play was. And for a lot of these teams, quarterback play is a big question. With that being a big question, for me, that trumps more than my question that I have about USC's defense. Because if you don't have a quarterback, you're at a disadvantage more than you are in terms of not having the defense. Because if these teams can't keep USC from scoring more than 28 and they got to play USC's game and they get into a high scoring affair, that favors USC. Yes. A lot of teams may have them beat up front, but are your corners going to be able to hang in coverage with a Zachariah branch? Yeah. We're actually... I, I do think like, I do think like this is a very good discussion. You can make a lot of points for both. You feel me? Yes. I, I could see things going left for USC, but I, I really think this is a big bounce back year for them. I really believe that a lot of the Big Ten is rebuilding from the big years they had. And I think that USC can take advantage of that. And they avoid Ohio State. Yes, they avoid and they avoid Oregon, too. Speaking of those two teams, we have a super chat from Evan Seption. Um, hopefully I didn't wait too long to get to it, but I didn't I didn't want to interrupt JT. Um Evanception, thank you for the $10. You won my March Madness challenge, in which, okay, so I owe you 25 bucks. Email me at collegefootballwithsam at gmail.com. Um, and and we'll we'll talk about that. And I'll I'll get you your um $25. I think I said it was in merchandise. I honestly forgot about that because my bracket was terrible and I've changed part-time jobs and had to study for an exam. So things Things got in the way, but thank you for reaching out to me. Um, I'm going to keep my word. Reach out at collegefootballwithsam at gmail.com. You can also find the link to my email um, in the channel description. Like, go to About the Channel, and I think you can click somewhere to find my email. Um, People have used that to reach out to me before. He asks, though, who do you guys think will step up to be the top QB in the Big Ten since many of the great QBs from last season are gone? Um, thank you for asking that question. 
Who do you think will step up to be the top QB in the Big Ten? I already know who my answer is. I'll go Drew Aller. Drew Aller showed a lot of promise. I felt he had a really good season. It's just he had a really bad game against Michigan and a bad game against Ohio State, too. Like, he just looked off. Hmm. I'm I'm actually I actually do think that's a possibility with Kotal Nicky. I think Kotal Nicky I do think Penn State's offense is gonna be ridiculous. And there's a part of me that wants to pick them to like do well. And I think I've said to people before and even on the channel that if they just didn't have Franklin as their head coach, they would be my natty pick. Like just remove Franklin, put in another head coach who's a better game manager. Keep even keep the staff and the roster exactly identical, and that would probably be my championship pick. Either them or um, Georgia, or maybe Ohio State, but th- they would rise to that tier. Um, but I just can't trust Franklin. I think Aller's going to be good. I'm going with Miller Moss at USC. Um, I think that he. I, th- I part of me thought about Dylan Gabriel. But I don't think Gabriel's ceiling is elite. I think Moss has the potential to have that elite ceiling. He he can't. He's not a scrambler, but he can be like a Baker Mayfield in college. I think. Um, Riley's used quarterbacks who don't scramble as much before. Look at Spencer Rattler, um, who that's not a very admirable comparison. But look at Baker Mayfield too, and he balled out in the Holiday Bowl. So my answer is Miller Moss. I don't think that. GT Sports answer is even bad at all. I think that might actually be a better answer than most people think. Um, if someone said like Gavin Wimsat, I would laugh, even though I think that he could get better. Um, Rutgers, by the way, if Wim- if Wimsat just plays like a, an above average QB, they could be a 2021 Michigan. Like they have they have the underrated receivers. They have the O line. They have the they have the battering ram at running back, and they have the defense and special teams. All they're missing from that Michigan team in twenty one's the tight end, and they have a QB who's more mobile than McNamara. That's who I I, I don't get why Nebraska just doesn't go to not Nebraska but Rutgers just doesn't go to their NIL back and be like, hey, like give us five hundred thousand so we go get us a quarterback. <laughs> I think it's because Wimsett has a high a high ceiling. I've watched moments of him where he like puts perfect touch on the ball and has good arm strength. He's just raw. Like he he needs. I thought to... I I thought when they got him, he was going to be able to take Rutgers football to that next level. I was like, ooh, they got a nice little four star recruit. Okay, but it's just every time these four or five star guys at quarterback go to a program like Rutgers, and you have hope that they can resurrect it. They show you why these programs have been dead for so long. Yes. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it poor recruiting or poor development or the fact that Greg Schiano had to build the thing up from... He had to build the foundation back up, to. He had to burn everything, remove the foundation. It's really good a job that he's done there. Thank you so much for watching this episode of College Football with Sam. I appreciate it. And I would appreciate it even more if you were to hit that like button, comment your thoughts on this video down below, hit that big red subscribe button, and also click that notification bell so that your phone, laptop, or whatever device you use can ding or buzz whenever I release new content and notify you about it so that you can watch more videos like this. College Football with Sam is the best Big Ten football channel on YouTube. We're going to be doing a giveaway when we hit 20,000 subscribers, and we're trying to become one of the best, if not the best, college football channels on YouTube. Your support means so much, and to those of you who are subscribed to my Patreon or purchase merchandise from my store, the links to those are down in the description and pinned comment. Thank you so much. I want to give a shout-out to my Patreons. Thanks to Crash2488 for being a Heisman member. Thanks to Spencer Bringhurst, Chris Lane, and Connor Little OH for being All-American members, and thanks to Will Loftus, John Lynn, Roaming Gnome, Matthew Sale, Austin Christmas, and Janisha Cockrell for being All-Conference members. Have a great day, guys, and if you're listening on Spotify or any non-YouTube podcast platform, 
please check the link in the channel description to find my YouTube channel. And if you're listening on YouTube, feel free to check out my Spotify, if you so please. Have a great day, guys, and I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.